We are back on the record. The time is 3.48. Could we, Mr. Artuso, could you uh, put up exhibit five? Dr. Collins, have you or has anyone at DOH uh, compared what's going on in Florida with the New Mexico outcomes, the COVID-related deaths? I have not. Well, let me do that for you. What, what Exhibit uh, 5 tells you is that in Florida, a state famous for being open, uh, there have been 1,849,744 cases and 29,474 deaths. And that, and that results in a fatality rate of 1.6%. New Mexico for that very same time has a fatality rate of 1.9%. And the numbers are 176,211 cases and 3,355 COVID-related cases. So that certainly doesn't support a strict shutdown uh, public health orders that New Mexico has imposed, does it? Objection form, foundation. Please rephrase the question. Yes, uh, Florida, which is widely widely uh, noted for the lack of lockdown and, and orders and restrictions on businesses and individuals. They have a fatality rate, the most recent one as of, as of February 18th of 1.6%. New Mexico's for the same period is 1.9%. Those statistics certainly do not support the proposition that New Mexico lockdown orders have been effective, do they? Objection form foundation. Our lockdown orders are to keep New Mexicans safe. Mm -hmm. uh, Florida's population is, is uh, even uh, more elderly than New Mexico's, right? Objection Foundation. The, the statistics available publicly is that Florida has 20.5% of the population over 65 years old. In New Mexico, it's 16.9. We know that COVID is more difficult or even fatal to old, older people, right? It is more fatal for those 75 and older, that's correct. And 65 and older as well? There is an increased risk for those 65 and older, that's correct. And it, it's a public fact that Florida's population density is much more dense in New Mexico, 378 persons per square mile, and New Mexico is 17 persons per square mile. So Florida with a, a larger overall population, a higher percentage of its population over 65, a density that is 22 times greater than New Mexico, no lockdowns, and it still has a lower fatality rate than New Mexico, 1.6 to 1.9%. Do you think there's nothing that can be learned from these statistics, this science, that would suggest that maybe our lockdown orders are too onerous? Objection form, Foundation. When you consider who's at risk for complications from COVID, it is not just age, it's also chronic conditions. And New Mexico is also socially vulnerable as far as impoverished people. Those factors increase our risk for complications from COVID. So you cannot compare New Mexico to Florida. Uh, is, is it your understanding that uh, New Mexico has a greater incident of chronic conditions than Florida? It's my understanding that there's a high prevalence of chronic conditions in the state of New Mexico. And do you know if it's greater or lesser than Florida's? 
The chronic conditions rates in Florida, I'm not familiar with. I just know we're very high in New Mexico. Well, let's pick South Dakota. South Dakota has a lot in common with New Mexico, right? It's a rural state. It's got a high percentage of Native Americans. Would you agree? Objection form, foundation. Can you rephrase the question? Yes, uh, South Dakota. Uh, South Dakota is very similar to New Mexico in many ways, right? It's a, it's a rural state, a Western rural state, correct? I don't know that it's very similar to New Mexico. Um, in population density, is it similar? I don't know. Uh, Native American population, is it similar? I don't know the data on South Dakota. The population density, uh, public knowledge, is 11 persons per square mile compared to New Mexico's 17 persons per, per square mile. So, uh, and in South Dakota, 16.6% of the population is over 65 years of age. And again, New Mexico is 16.9%. Do you know what the most recent fatality rates for South Dakota compared to New Mexico are? No. Let me give you let me give those to you. 1.7 in South Dakota, which like Florida, is famous for not locking down. And New Mexico's fatality, uh, fatality rates are 1.9%. Does that suggest to you some concern that our lockdown orders are too onerous and they're not having the impact that people think that they do? Objection form foundation. No. What does it tell you that that the experts in New Mexico are, are just um, uh, superior to those in Florida or South Dakota that are addressing the uh, lockdown uh, orders and, and how to deal with COVID? Objection form. Can you rephrase the question? Yes. Um, it would be a fair assumption that both Florida and South Dakota take their responsibilities to their population seriously, right? Objection form, foundation. What, what's wrong with the former foundation of that question? You're asking her to know something about Florida or Texas when she, I mean, excuse me, Florida or South Dakota, what their governments do when she's not a part of that government and she said she does not know the data for those states. So you don't think it's reasonable to assume that Florida and South Dakota have experts who are concerned and trying to deal with COVID-19, Dr. Collins? I don't know. You don't think their experience is instructive and should be considered when New Mexico is contemplating putting people uh, out of business and on the unemployment line? Objection form, foundation. What's wrong with that question? It's leading, it's speculative. I hope it's leading. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. Dr. Collins, you can answer if you understand the question. I don't know the specifics or details about South Dakota or Florida. And the question was, don't you think that these other states' experiences where they have not put people out of business and employees on the unemployment line and have better results than we do, you don't think there's something to learn and understand about how they are addressing COVID in their states? Section Form Foundation. I don't know the details of their states. Okay. What, um, with regard to the calculations about um, the impact of vaccinations on the transmission of COVID, um, I think I've read or, or heard you say something this morning that there had been a calculation that there was a a 20% reduction. Did I, did I get that right? Can you clarify? Yes, the, uh, I, I thought that I understood that someone has calculated that the vaccines are having a very positive impact and that they are reducing 
transmission transmission of COVID by 20%? So what has been presented based on uh, LANO, Los Alamos National Laboratory, is that from some assumptions, they believe that the vaccine has had an impact on cases by reducing them by 20%. Okay. And uh, have you read that study? So in modeling, this is not a study. This is actually an analysis. It's a, they're running an analysis. It was not an actual study. Have you reviewed the analysis? I've been presented with the number of what they found. So like an executive summary or something? A PowerPoint. What, was there any, any uh, linear projection to say if we if we continue at this rate of vaccinations, then we should expect a, a higher number and, and some prediction of what that number is? No. Stands to reason though, doesn't it? As, as if, if the level of vaccinations at this point has resulted in a 20% reduction, uh, increasing the vaccination should uh, further increase that number, right? Objection form. All things remaining constant, we would hope so. Okay. And, and the way they did that was a uh, regression analysis, right? It was a modeling equation, correct. And regression analysis is, is a reliable method of identifying variables like vaccines or shutdown orders that have an impact on the topic of interest in this instance, COVID transmission, right? Objection form. It depends on what the outcome that you're trying to measure is. If the outcome is a COVID transmission, which I, I think that was the, the uh, topic of interest, I think that was what was measured in the LANL study, um, then a regression analysis is a reliable method of identifying which variables, like the vaccine, would have an impact on COVID transmission, right? It's one option, yes. Okay. And why hasn't the state run a regression analysis to determine if the shutdown orders have a positive impact on COVID transmission? Objection Foundation. I cannot speak to what they did before I arrived, and I'm sure moving forward, we can get more information. Would you agree that a uh, regression analysis of whether uh, trampoline gyms contribute to COVID transmission would be, would be uh, the science and the knowledge and an objective basis for a decision as to whether trampoline gyms should be prohibited and closed or not? Objection form. I'm gonna re redirect you to an analysis would be helpful. We could look at that, yes. What would that entail? What would that analysis entail? How would you perform the analysis? I'd have to work with statisticians and LANO to look at what variables we want to consider as independent as predictors of case counts. And then looking at that, we could then model um, and determine if the shutdown had an impact. And could you, you, you could specifically address whether prohibiting trampoline gyms has had an impact on COVID transmission, right? Objection foundation. When you're running an analysis, you're looking at numbers in general. And so you're looking at shutdown orders for a large number of people. So looking specifically at trampoline parks and pulling out that one, it's not gonna be a stable model. So no, I don't agree with that. So there's, there is no analysis that can be done to establish the science as to whether you should close or allow trampoline gyms to be open? Objection form foundation. I would work with the statisticians to come up with a reliable approach to look at that question. Do you have any sense of what that reliable approach would um, be composed of? Not at this moment.
Are you aware of the state attempting any other analysis of the adverse economic impacts of the shutdown orders? No, I'm not. And so it's fair to say that the benefit and the damage of these shutdown orders has not been analyzed, correct? Objection, foundation. I'd have to go back and look to see what was done before I arrived to answer that question. Presently, you're not aware of any consideration of the costs and damages to the businesses, owners, and employees of these businesses, such as a trampoline gym that have been closed, correct? Please rephrase the question. Yeah, let me, let me do it a different way here. The state has done nothing with regard to considering the costs and damages that these shutdown orders are causing anyone or any business, correct? Objection, foundation. I don't know. Would you agree that the costs and damages of these orders is clearly significant and harmful? Objection, foundation, form. I don't know. Why don't you know? Could you please rephrase the question? Yeah. If, if you were being forced to close a business permanently and lose all of your investment and hard work on that business, you'd agree that that could very well be a great economic harm to you, right? That could be. And for the vast majority of people, losing a business will certainly have seriously adverse effect on the public health of those employers and employees who are out of work, right? Objection form. Sir, it depends on the business and how many people are out and the extent of that. So you're suggesting, well, what are the parameters there? What, what business uh, would, what closing what business would not have a seriously adverse effect on the health of the employee, employers and the employees who are now out of work? Can you give me an example of, of one closing that would not have a seriously adverse effect on the health of the employers and employees? I'm sorry, but your question is too broad for me to answer. Is it fair to say that to your knowledge, you, that, that no one in the state of New Mexico has considered the adverse effect on the health of the trampoline gym owners, employees, and employees that the shutdown orders have caused? Objection form. What's wrong with that one? <laughs> I was confused by it, sir. <laughs> It's a very long. Could you please rephrase the question? Yes, Dr. Collins, are you aware of anyone in the state of New Mexico government that's considered the damages uh, and the cost inflicted upon those persons whose business businesses have been shut down? I'm not aware. It is, a, it is an indisputable fact that losing your job is one of the most significant stressors that people uh, suffer from, right? Right up there with uh, divorce and, and uh, a few other things. It's a significant stressor, yes. Yeah. 
And New Mexico is a very poor state. We are now leading the nation in shutting down private businesses. What are the health factors that are going to become much worse because businesses are shut down, employers are, are no longer to are no longer able to meet their bills and employees are now on the unemployment line. Can you think of any of the traditional public health factors that are going to get better because of the shutdown orders? Could you rephrase the question? I heard two different questions. Okay. The shutdown orders are putting people out of business and it is putting employees on the unemployment line, right? Unemployment has gone up, yes. And in fact, in, in January, New Mexico was the second uh, leading state for unemployment. Our rates were the second highest in the nation. Were you aware of that? I had not seen those stats. Do you have any conception of New Mexico's unemployment rates and where it fits nationally? I'm familiar with the concerns with increase in unemployment, but that's the extent of the numbers I have is just a trend of an increase. The state's lockdown orders is going to have an adverse impact on suicide, right? Objection Foundation. What's, what's the uh, foundation there? That's, it's a question. What's, what's the foundation objection? The question assumes that suicide rates are going to be increased. Okay. Um, isn't, it a, isn't it a fact, Dr. Collins, that COVID shutdown, putting people out of work and putting people on the unemployment line is without a doubt going to increase suicides. I do not have data on a cause and effect, sir. So you don't have a professional opinion that, that people not being able to provide for their family and losing their life investment that isn't going to lead to more suicides? What I would know is that based on the stress of losing your job that you could have more depression the link to more suicides, I do not have that data. Okay. Uh, the lockdown is going to uh, increase incidence of diabetes, right? Objection foundation. I do not have that data in front of me. You don't have a professional opinion that, that diabetes is going to be increased because of the lockdown orders? In my professional opinion, the lockdown orders and loss of jobs and more stress is what I know will happen. Okay. And more stress will lead to obesity problems, right? Objection foundation. We don't know that, sir. It's a speculation. You don't, you don't think there's literature uh, that indicates that stress from the lockdown orders being your business uh, closing and you being out of a job uh, doesn't increase obesity? Obesity is a chronic condition and having an assessment within a, a pandemic that's been around here for 11 months, I cannot make that association at this time. Have you, have you attempted to review any literature about obesity, particularly childhood obesity during the shutdown? I've not reviewed the literature. Is the response, who's responsible for the decision to allow nail salons, spas, tanning salons, hair salons, barberships, 
barber shops, excuse me, raft and balloon tours, gyms, pop golf, group fitness classes, and a professional soccer team to be open for business and miniature golf, auto racetracks, and a whole bunch of other businesses to be closed. Who's, who's responsible for those decisions? Those decisions come from the Department of Health as part of our public health order. And at least from 30 minutes ago, it's, it's now your responsibility, right? As the secretary of the Department of Health? Yes, it is now officially under my purview. And you're not aware of any actual science, any actual study to suggest these allowed activities are any less risky than activities prohibited by the public health orders, are you? Objection, foundation, form. I'm aware of studies regarding COVID and how you contain it. Okay. And, and with regard to the distinctions that the Department of Health is drawing, I, I gave you the list, the ones that are allowed, and I'm asking you if you're aware of any science, any actual study to suggest that these allowed activities and businesses are any less risky than activities prohibited by the public health orders. I'm not aware of any studies. Are you aware of the changing definitions contained in the public health orders? I believe we started out the conversation with you mentioning that. But prior to that, no. How was Top Golf approved to open when there are three? three sides in a very confined space. How, how is that less risky than a collection of prohibited activities? For instance, um, trampoline gyms. Objection form. I have to go back and confer with general counsel to make sure about how we made that decision since it started with predating me. And ultimately, did you make that decision? Ultimately, I'm now responsible for those decision, decisions as of December 14th. So did, did you make that decision that Top Golf would be allowed to operate? I signed the public health order, so yes. Oh, why is Top Golf allowed when they're confined on, on three sides in restaurants, for instance? Uh, have to be open on three sides. How, how do you make those decisions? I'd have to go and look at Top Golf specifically and give you a better answer. I can't answer that today. How did professional soccer uh, get approved? I have to go back and look and uh, talk with general counsel to get a better answer for you. Group fitness activities were originally prohibited and then they became approved. Do you know uh, what happened to move them from the doghouse to the uh, approved list, group fitness activities? I'd have to confer with general counsel. What's the thinking that led the state to exile our college football and basketball teams when no other state thought that was necessary? I'd have to confer with the governor's office and general counsel. How is the risk to those college students any less in these other states where the lockdown orders are not as restrictive? How is the risk to those students any less? Can you please rephrase the question? Yes. Somebody has decided to require that the state's uh, football and, and basketball players, and presumably spring sports is coming too, that uh, they cannot operate, cannot uh, practice uh, in the state, and therefore they are practicing and, and playing games in Colorado, Utah, Nevada, and Texas. 
how in the world from a public health standpoint does that make sense since all of those states do not have the restrictive lockdown orders that we have? So I've been on this job for two months and I cannot go back and understand what happened before I arrived. But as of now, I could confer with general counsel to better understand the decision-making. In the public health world, would you agree with me that if something is not taken into consideration in the decisions to close businesses, it is not important? I, uh, please rephrase the question. In, in the public health world, would you agree with me that if something is not taken into consideration in the decisions to close businesses, it is not important? I still don't understand the question. Okay. In your decisions about shutdowns, what businesses to uh, shutter, close, and require to be closed. If you do not consider a factor in that decision, that means that factor is not important, right? There's something known as unmeasured confounding. You can't account for all factors. And so I would not agree with you. So it may be that uh, factors that are not considered, well, we can flip that coin then. So then you would say that uh, factors that are not considered may be important. So I feel that the question is very vague and not clearly expressed and I'm having a hard time answering it. The process thus far is that these public health orders uh, do not consider the potential harm or damage to the businesses that are being closed, right, so far? The public health orders are to contain or reduce the spread of COVID. And the answer to my question is that thus far, these public health orders have not considered any damage or cost to the businesses that are being ordered shut, right? The Objection for foundation. The focus has been on improving the health of New Mexicans and keeping cases down. And, and none of those considerations include considering the cost and damages to the businesses, is that correct? I don't know. In my time here, I don't know. Don't you think that, that the cost and damages is something that's important to consider in these public health orders? The public health orders are really to keep New Mexico safe. That's the extent of DOH. No matter, no matter what the cost or damage? Is that correct? I wouldn't say that's correct. I, my focus as an MD is to look at the health and the outcomes of the state regarding cases. And so that is the focus of the public health orders. Is there anyone that is supposed to look at the cost and damages to the businesses and people that are subject to these orders? I'm sure there are. Do you know who they are? And no, I do not. And, and to the best of your knowledge, uh, this is something that the Department of Health does not do. That is consider the costs and damages to the people who are subject to these shutdown orders. We're in a historic time in this country in a pandemic and public health agencies are focused on health. 
And no, I'm not aware of us being in the business of trying to address um, more of the economy at this point because we've not had a pandemic in my lifetime. Okay. Can we go to exhibit seven, please? Have you had occasion to review the fatality rates by age? Not in the past six weeks or even longer, actually. Even, even generally, you're aware that uh, children from five to 14 have a very low fatality rate, right? In general, yes. And the fatality rate is actually lower than some uh, childhood diseases, uh, pneumonia and so on, right? For COVID? To my knowledge for COVID, it's lower among younger people. Right, okay. And, and so the, the statistics, these are, this chart's presented in a way, uh, that you're familiar with. So for children uh, from ages of five to 14, the fatality rate is 0 0.001, uh, which means one out of every 100,000 diagnosed uh, with COVID have died, right? Correct. And teens have a fatality rate of 0 0.003, uh, three out of 100,000 diagnosed with COVID, right? From this chart, yes. Okay. And that's consistent with your knowledge about uh, fat uh, fatality rates and how younger, younger people are less susceptible to uh, fatalities from COVID, right? Correct. And you don't agree that child obesity is a pandemic in the US and much of the world now? I didn't say I didn't agree that it's an issue. Your question was to COVID and obesity as cause and effect. Okay. Uh, you'd agree that uh, childhood obesity is a, is a serious problem? Yes. And um, can I have exhibit eight, please? Exhibit eight is a tough study, uh, the pandemic and childhood uh, weight gain. And on uh, page two, it indicates one in three of all US children have problems with uh, overweight or obesity. Is that consistent with your understanding of the problem? I know obesity is a huge problem for in our country, so that seems to be consistent. Um, this analysis says that there is emerging evidence that uh, concerning the impact of COVID on, on weight related behaviors. And on page three, it says past research has shown that time out of school, like summer vacation, tends to be associated with a higher level of weight gain. It says that may be because when kids at home, they don't have physical activity opportunities like recess or PE classes for access to school meals, which need to meet certain federal nutritional guidelines. It says, on the other hand, they may have more opportunities for things like unhealthy snacking or sed sedentary activities, which tend to be associated with greater weight gain. Study suggests that the same thing may be happening now due to, due to the pandemic. That seems to make sense, does it not, Dr. Collins? Conception form. Can you clarify what seems to make sense? that the pandemic is going to cause greater weight gain. Objection foundation. I don't have data to say that. Uh, you, you can't, 
you do not believe that the COVID-19 is going to have an adverse impact on childhood weight gain? I do not have data to show that. Okay. So therefore, if you don't have data, then you can't conclude that the, the COVID-19 uh, is going to cause greater weight gain? I can speculate that I think it might. Sure be likely, wouldn't you guess? I'd rather not guess. So if you don't have any data that suggests trampoline gyms are any more risky than gyms, why does the Department of Health place them in the category and prohibit their opening? We have data on transmissibility of COVID, which is through doc droplets and through aerosolization and mask help that. And so from that, we can infer what is a safe activity relative to keeping people from catching COVID, which is mask wearing hand washing and distancing. And in you assume that masks uh, cannot be worn safely on a trampoline? To my knowledge, they cannot be. Do you have any data or study that leads you to that conclusion to put these businesses uh, out of business and these employees out of work? No actual studies, no. Physical activity is important for children for many reasons, right? Correct. And it improves uh, children's cardiometabolic markers like blood pressure and cholesterol profiles, right? I am not a pediatric researcher. I work on the other end of the age spectrum, but if I were to read the literature, I could give you more of a confirmative answer. Um, and you understand there's evidence of benefits of the children exercising, such as assisting in sleep, stress, self-confidence, mood, and even cognition and academic performance? I'm aware of this benefit for adults. I'm an internal medicine doctor, so I don't take care of children and I don't consistently read the literature on children. Do you have any reason to believe that exercise doesn't improve uh, all of these factors for children? It's not a, a matter of not having a reason to believe, it's just I haven't reviewed the data. Exhibit nine, please. Has the state uh, studied this issue um, indicated here on the, on the underlying part for many children who already struggled with their weight before corona, uh, coronavirus, the pandemic has led them to backslide. Has there been any consideration of the impacts on children by uh, the pandemic? I'm not aware of any studies. So that would be an appropriate thing for a public uh, health department, would it not, to address um, childhood uh, problems, obesity and weight gain or so on, either both before and after the pandemic? Like many other questions that we'll have, it certainly has merit. And children who fall into the obese category will go on to have severe conditions such as excuse me, may go on to have severe health conditions such as type two diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol and sleep apnea, right? The key word there, sir, is may. Do you have any reason to believe that the pandemic will make these uh, outcomes and these problems better? Without seeing the data, I don't know. You can't venture a guess on that, doctor? Objection form, foundation. What's wrong with the form? The witness has stated several times that she needs the data. <laughs> it's been asked and answered, sir. 
I'm asking her as a as a doctor if she has a reasonable assumption about these matters. And if and if she if she's unable to testify under oath that people who fall, children who fall in the obese category may go on to have severe health conditions such as type two diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and sleep apnea. I'd just like that on the record. Okay. Sorry. All right, Dr. Collins, you may answer if you can. Yes. So the link between obesity and such things as type 2 diabetes and high blood pressure has been established and definitely for me as an internal medicine doctor, not a pediatrician, I see that link. I have not studied this in children, and that really defers to someone who's in pediatrics. And yes, I'm a public health practitioner, but at this point, I'm speculating. Do you think it's worth risking permanent damage to children's physical health so as to avoid a 0.001% chance that a child age 14 or under might die from COVID? So when you think about the risk of COVID and the fact that there's a low mortality among children, there is the asymptomatic transmission of a carrier, a child, taking it home to their parents. And we have to be cautious about that. Do you have any statistics on that? Not in front of me, I do not. Um, do such, has, has the state studied that transmission route? There have been, there's been national work looking at asymptomatic transmission, which is the reason for being concerned about activities and making sure that we try and contain the virus with distancing, mask wearing and hand washing. But the state is now behind opening up schools, right? Yes. But, but you don't think the state should support uh, additional opportunities for exercise for these same kids at a trampoline gym that is requiring masks, social distancing, and other safety procedures? The data that we have around the protection or the limited risk that we have with schools reopening with best practices enforced as well as with surveillance testing is the rationale for opening schools, one of them. How does that differ from uh, allowing, joining the other 49 states and allowing trampoline gyms in New Mexico to open and provide exercise for kids who A, do not seem to, um, do, not, do not seem to uh, test positive, and do not have any, uh, do not have a significant fatality if, if they do in fact contract it. How, how is it different? Can Schools. you repeat the question please? Now let's start over. How, how is that decision different from the decision to allow gyms, trampoline gyms to provide exercise opportunities for children with COVID safe practices? The school reopening is based on getting students and children back to learning and to knowing that we can do so safely. I don't have data on trampoline parks. And would it be safe to say you have no plans to uh, acquire that data? That's not safe to say. In two months in this role, there's a lot to be done. And right now we have vaccine rollout. At least now, uh, there are no present plans to study uh, that risk factor and compare it to the decision that allowed the state to open schools. Would that be correct? As of today, there are no plans. Exhibit 10, please. This is from the uh, CDC um, from, from August uh, 14th of 2020. And the CDC at, at page one notes that symptoms of anxiety disorder and depressive disorder increased considerably in the United States during April through June, 2020, 
compared with the same period in 2019. Does that uh, allow you any more confidence in concluding that the pandemic is causing additional anxiety disorder and de depressive disorder? What you're showing me now, these sentences you've underlined would suggest yes. Okay. Do you have any information that suggests this is not correct? I would have to review this in detail to give you a better answer. As, as you sit there at this time, do you have any information that would suggest that anxiety disorder and depressive disorder are not being caused, increases in anxiety disorder and depressive disorder not being caused by the pandemic. Can you rephrase the question, please? Yes, do you have any information that suggests that the increase in anxiety disorder and depressive disorder is not being caused by the pandemic? I don't have any information. Okay. And the next uh, underlined part uh, indicates um, increases in persons seriously considering suicide. You see that? One second. Depressive trauma stressor. I see the seriously considered suicide. I see that. Right. And so you would agree that the pandemic is, is increasing the persons that are seriously considering suicide, would you not? I don't know the external validity of this study that you're showing me. I don't see the journal where it's published. I don't see the tables. So I cannot come to that conclusion. Does that help you any? Uh, I think it's from the... Morbidity, mortality report it's reliable but i yeah. still have not looked at this data closely and where they collected the data and council just for the record um you provided us 16 exhibits about 45 minutes before the deposition um so nobody has had time to review these well i i, I look forward to any suggestion that the pandemic is improving mental health or some expert that wants to testify to that and that the pandemic is not adversely increasing public health. I'll, I'll, I'll receive that at any time, day or night. So let's see if we can continue here. Uh, the CDC, this report published in the CDC uh, indicates that one adverse mental or behavioral health symptom was reported by more than one half of the respondents. You see that? On the right hand side, Dr. Collins. Why don't you place the cursor over it for someone? Thank you. Um, yes, I do see that. You have any reason to doubt that? When I'm reviewing the literature, I look at the characteristics of the folks from who they collected the data. And that helps me inform me as to how I deliver care and if it's generalizable to my population. And all I see here are numbers from little paragraphs and I don't have the full article and, or the opportunity have, to have reviewed it. Okay. Let's go to uh, exhibit 11. In exhibit 11, um, Dr. Stuart Brown at page three states sustained moderate to severe play deprivation, particularly during the first 10 years of life appeared linked to major varied, but virtually omnipresent emotional dysregulation. That is increased prevalence of depression, tendency to become mired in rigid, inflexible perception of options available for adoption, diminished impulse control, less self-regulation, increased addictive predilection, 
diminished management of aggression and fragility and shallowness of enduring impersonal relationships. Do you agree with that? On what data is this uh, summary based? As a, as a general proposition of medicine, you don't agree that sustained moderate severe play deprivation will adversely affect children? In my 20 years as a researcher, I have focused on geriatric patients. I do not have data or I've not reviewed the literature to say yes to this. So, so you're not able as, as a, a public health official to, to state that uh, moderate to severe play deprivation is a bad thing for children? You, you can't go that far, doctor, without, a, without reviewing the literature? As a solid public health practitioner, I'd be remiss to go that far without reviewing the literature. Do you think moderate to severe play deprivation uh, can be a positive on children? I would really need to review the literature. Is it fair to say that you're not aware of the um, Department of Health considering the moderate to severe play deprivation that may be caused by the shutdown orders? Projection form. Could you rephrase the question? Yes. Can we conclude that the Department of Health or you personally has, have not considered the impact of moderate to severe play deprivation on children? I've not interviewed more than more than 3,000 employees in DOH, so I cannot conclude that. You're not aware of any correct, any consideration of, of the impact of moderate to severe play deprivation? I'm not aware of that as of today. Are the, do you anticipate that the shutdown orders and the effort to, and the effort to address the COVID-19 pandemic is going to continue until the risk is zero? Those decisions are in progress. So that's a possibility that the public health orders are gonna continue until the risk from COVID-19 is zero? Objection, seeks privileged information protected by executive privilege. I'm gonna ask the secretary uh, not answer this question. Okay, well, let me, let me see if I can rephrase that. I, I don't want any of your discussions with the governor or the governor's council. Has they, have you, any knowledge as to where this is gonna end? Are the public health orders gonna continue until the risk is zero? I cannot answer that question. So it, it's possible that the state of New Mexico and the public health orders is going to keep trampoline gyms closed until you determine that the risk is zero? That's a possibility? Objection, foundation seeks information that's protected by executive privilege. I don't have that information, sir. Is, is there, so there's been no discussion about, about, about the, about where the, the state may stop with regard to the risk and the, and I'll strike that, let's go on. Do you agree that trampoline gyms offer significant health and therapeutic benefits? I don't know that for a fact, sir. Exhibit 12, please. Is, 
Exhibit 12 uh, concerns a NASA study, which at uh, page one uh, concludes that the results indicate that for similar levels of heart rate and oxygen uptake, the magnitude of the biomechanical stimuli is greater with jumping on a trampoline than with running. Do you have any reason to think that's not correct, that NASA study? What you're presenting is one study, and I'd like to see several to come to that conclusion. Are you aware of, of any study to the contrary that suggests that uh, uh, trampolines uh, are not uh, superior to treadmills? I'd have to review the literature. Okay, how about exhibit 13? Has anyone at the Department of Health, to your knowledge, undertaken any consideration of the health benefit of trampolines to either children or adults? I'm not aware of any studies. Do you agree that considering the health benefits to children and, and adults from trampolining uh, should be something that is considered when trying to determine whether or not trampoline gyms are shut down? The shutdown orders are based on keeping New Mexico safe. Are, are they, and, and so no other considerations are valid in your mind if, if, if the shutdown order, uh, excuse me, if, if uh, so no other factors are valid to consider in determining shutdown orders, except how, how the department or other experts conclude the COVID risk can be reduced. The public okay. health orders are based on reducing transmission and replication of this virus that has taken many lives. And that's the focus of the public health orders is to reduce okay. cases. And, and so I, I hate to beat a dead horse, but uh, and, and that means without regard to the health, without regard to any adverse health impacts on children or adults or adverse economic impacts on businesses or employees, correct? Rejection form. Keeping people alive and out of the hospital. Exhibit 13, please. This is 14. Did you mean 14? I'm certain that I did. Okay. This is a uh, research of uh, this is from the research quarterly for exercise and sport. I'm going to guess that you have uh, no opinion as to whether trampoline training can be effective as resistance training for improving knee muscle strength and dynamic balance in young men and women. I have, uh, yeah, I have not reviewed the literature. Do you have an, do, you don't have an opinion as a doctor that, that trampoline training is likely to be effective uh, and improve knee muscle strength and dynamic balance, you, you, you can't get there. I take it from, from your background and experience in public health. I do not have uh, knowledge of the literature. I'd have to review it.
we've uh, provided a, a collection of, of, of studies or something, and, and perhaps uh, when someone gets a chance, it'd be uh, appreciated if, if those would uh, be reviewed. Let me, uh, let me turn to another topic here. The public health orders that you are now responsible for uh, include the word recreation in them. Would you agree that recreation is an imprecise term? Can you define imprecise? Sorry, I have to be so concrete. No, not, uh, not accurate, ambiguous, um, susceptible of several meanings. Okay, this has been a long session. Please rephrase the question. Would you agree that recreation is an imprecise term? I don't know that that's relevant, but um, it has a definition. Well, where is that definition? Is it in the public health order? No, it is not in the public health order. The recreation piece, I'm not aware that it's actually spelled out in the, in the public health okay. order. What, what then is your assumption, what's your working definition of recreation, that the term that's in your public health orders? Leisure time. Would it include, uh, this one definition here, refreshment of one's mind or body after work through activity that amuses or stimulates play? Would, would that be a acceptable definition from recreation? That's not the definition I would use. I would use the term leisure time activity for recreation. Can leisure time activity include sports? Yes, it can. The city of Albuquerque has recreational basketball leagues. They've got uh, flag football, soccer, and so on. So recreation uh, certainly uh, includes sports, right? It can, yes. And the definition of gym, what is your understanding of a gym? A place uh, where you go to exercise. Can you get exercise at a trampoline facility? Based on what you've shared, it sounds like you can, yes. Bless you, Dr. Collins. Council, if it's all right, can we take a, a, a quick break? We've been going over an hour now. Yes, let me, let me, before we break, are there any answers you'd like to change at this time, Dr. Collins? I do not have a list of all the questions we spent the last nearly three hours going over. So mm -hmm. right now, I don't know of any that I wanna change. Thank you, let's take a short break. Uh, what did you want, Ms. Dudley? Five minutes, 10 minutes? <laughs> Let's let's do ten minutes if you don't mind, please. Okay, very good. Thank ten you. Minutes. We're now off the record. The time is four fifty-seven. <laughs> 